Hello and welcome, I'm Lisa from Minerva and today I'm going to be talking you through how to sew the Closet Core Patterns Pietra Pants. Now this is a beautiful pair of trousers uh, designed by Closet Core Patterns. I've sewn this pattern a number of different times in lots of different fabric and I'm really excited to talk you through it today. So in today's video I'm going to talk you through the process of sewing the pattern step by step. The pattern is split up into key sections and we have followed the pattern instruction booklet exactly. Uh, so this means that you can just follow at home really easily and you can clearly see the steps that we're following and showing you how to do them. So hopefully that's really easy for you to follow. Um, in order to help you even further, we've broken the video down into key chapters as per the instructions. So you'll see at what point we're moving on to do the waistband, at what point we've done the pockets, what point we're doing the hem. So that if in your sewing journey you want to sort of um, scroll through and hit the key marker points, you're wondering how to sew pockets, that should be really easy to find in the video. So I hope you find that really helpful. Um, as always in the sew alongs, uh, all the supplies and all the links to the fabric, uh, the elastic, the thread is all linked below. So you can easily find that if you want to recreate the exact look that I'm doing. The fabric that I've selected to sew this pattern is one of our core fabrics, which is the Atelier Brunette Linen Cotton Blend Fabric. Uh, you can see it behind me here. It comes in seven different colours. It's really lovely to work with. I'd really recommend it for this pattern. It's just like the perfect weight. I think it's 145 grams per um, square metre. So um, that's a really nice sort of medium weight fabric. Um, if you are interested in recreating and uh, this exact look and you'd like to recreate um, the look using these fabrics, I do have a fabric focus video um, in, in our video section that you can take a look at in more detail about the Atelier Brunette fabric. Um, so that's a really informative video, so do click on the link below and have a look at that if you're particularly interested in using this fabric. Um, this is the off-white, this is the blush, this is the ochre, this is the, um, oh what's this one? This is the cactus, <laughs> this is the chestnut which is the one I picked for my trousers and this is the cobalt and the night is the final one. So if you like any of these colours do take a look at them. And um, as ever, if you've got any comments or questions, please do post them in the video below. I'm really happy to answer those and help you along in your sewing journey with this particular sew along. Um, do follow Minerva for any more inspiring videos um, and fabric um, focus videos as well. They're particularly helpful to give you a good feel of how the fabric sits and works. Okay, that's enough for me. Let's get started with our sewing. <laughs> Welcome to our Pietra Pants Sew Along. This is a pattern by Closet Core Patterns and today we'll be talking you through how to sew up the pattern step by step using really clear and simple guidance. So here we go. It comes with three different views, one um, fitted trouser view, a shorts view and then also um, a wide leg view. And in order to make this pattern, you only need a few supplies, which is obviously the pattern, and we'll tag this below in the comments. You need some fabric. I'll talk you through, through that in a minute. You also need um, some two inch wide elastic and obviously some matching thread to match with your fabric. All of these supplies will be linked below if you want to copy this exact version. <laughs> right, so let's look at the pattern. As I said, there are three different views that you can sew. View A is a wide leg uh, pattern. Uh, view B is the cropped pattern, which is the one that I'll be doing today. And view C is a pair of shorts, which is basically just view A, but cropped. So that's really good. So you've got a nice versatile pattern with a few different options, depending on your style and how you like to wear your clothes. Um, the fabric on the back of the packet, it clearly says um, that it can be made with a variety of fabrics depending on how you want it to feel. So you can use a really swishy fabric for maybe view A that would give you a really sort of glamorous look. You could use um, rayon or tensile or even silk. Um, what it also says is for a more defined shape, you might want to use a structured woven, which is really easy to sew with, such as linen or a lightweight denim. Um, or even some twill. I have sewn this with twill before and I would say, and the pattern does comment here as well, that heavy woven fabrics may create a bit too much volume with the elastic at the waist and kind of look a bit bunched up. Um, so in today's sew along, I'm actually going to use linen, um, which has a, uh, is, is a thinner fabric compared to like a more <clears throat> heavyweight woven twill, which is what I used last time. Um, it just 
creates a different effect. So that's all, Nothing, no problem with using either. Um, it's a very versatile pattern, as we said. So let's just take a look at the pattern in a bit more detail. On the back of the pattern, um, there is a list of the amount of fabric that you need, depending on whether you're going to do view A, B or C. So take a look at that, decide um, where you sit on, on the body measurement charts. Um, obviously bust doesn't really matter with this because it's just a pair of trousers. Um, but you can pick um, your waist and it has in inches and centimetres and also your hips. So take a look at that and then run your finger down and see how much fabric you need depending on which view you need. For this I'm doing view B and I'm going to be cutting out um, around the size eight, I'll be grading between two sizes. So for this, my fabric is 1.5 meters long, so I know that I need 1.85 meters of fabric. Okay guys, so let's take a look at what is actually inside the pattern. You have your pattern pieces which are on tracing paper and you'll need to cut those out depending on the size that you fall into and also your instructions. Now I do think that the closet core um, patterns are really easy to understand, great illustrations, um, they have a sort of graphic design background and a really good understanding of how to communicate things really clearly. So first off, you're going to need to have a read through the instructions, make sure you understand those, and then uh, decide which um, grade and which size you want to cut out with your pattern pieces, which view you're going to cut out, A, B or C. Um, and then let's take a look at the instructions. So the instructions have some really helpful information at the beginning. If you're not too confident as a sewer, it is a really good idea to just give it a quick read before you start so you understand the big picture. Um, here are the size charts again in a little bit more detail. They also tell you the finished garment size, which is really useful to know how much ease, and ease means um, how much sort of space you've got in between um, your body and the garment. If you've got like a few centimetres or um, a few inches, you get a feel for sort of how comfy and how close fitting the garment will be. Also it goes into more detail about the fabric requirement and the length of the elastic that you need. Don't forget that if you're going with a directional print, you'll obviously need um, more fabric to do your pattern matching. There's a glossary with some useful terms, and there's also the pattern piece inventory, which is, I would say, essential. <laughs> so we're gonna do view B. So for view B, I need piece A, F, G, H, M, N, O, and P, um, which is really clear there. If you're doing view A, those are the pieces that you need. Have a reference and look at the instructions. And view C, again, they're different pieces. Some of them will be very similar. Um, so you see the waistband is um, very similar in all of them. It's the same piece, M, N, O, and P, across all sizes. The next page talks about the um, fabric pattern diagrams. So this is where it shows you how to lay your fabric out on the ground or on your table, on your worktop, and then how to put the pattern pieces on top of the fabric and cut them out to create the most uh, efficient use of your fabric. So take a look at that, depending on your size and also the width of your fabric. Now don't forget to cut out your interfacing too. That's just for the waistband and the top pockets. Now if you've got any questions about grading between sizes, there's some really helpful information here. There's also a description on how to lengthen or shorten the pattern. Closet core patterns do go into a lot of detail regarding um, providing you with information about seam finishes, about fitting, about how to grade a seam, and we'll talk you through all of those in the sew along today as well. Okay, so time to take a look at the instructions. Let's get going. So for view B, these are the pattern pieces that we need, E and F, G, H, and the waistband pieces, M, N, and O. Now don't forget that with pattern pieces M and N, it says cut two in fabric and cut two in interfacing. M is just cut, cut one on the fold, which means that you cut it on the fold, and when you open it up, it's just one piece. And the same with the interfacing. And finally, Pattern piece P. This is literally just interfacing for your pocket. So now, after you've cut out your pattern pieces, it's really helpful and I would say essential to make note of all of the notches. You see these little lines here and here. What you need to do with those is really carefully just make a note of them. And you can do that in a range of different ways. Personally, 
I really like to just show a little snip in the seam, which is about five mil, half a centimeter. And when I sew up, I can sew up the seams later, I can really clearly see those little notches and line them up really easily. Now the first part of the instructions simply says to apply interfacing to pocket piece along the pocket seam, which is down at the bottom of the piece as you look at it. So the waist seam is up at the top and the pocket seam is clearly denoted down at the bottom. This is the one with a stronger angle to it. So we've already cut out our interfacing. So let's apply it to the wrong side of the pocket piece. Now with some fabrics it's really hard to tell which is the right side and which is the wrong side. And when you're ironing your interfacing on it's important to have your iron on a dry setting. Now the interfacing has one smooth side and one rough side. This is the rough side, you can feel the difference. So I'm just going to apply, which way does this one go? <laughs> this one will go on this one. I'm just going to apply that down with the rough side facing down. So when you apply your iron, just put it in place. There's no need to move the iron about a lot. And you should be able to see that that's sticking in place really nicely. Okay, so the first bit of the instructions um, tells us to align the pocket seam, which is down here, and the pocket seam of the um, front legs together. So you can see there's a little notch here that says pocket notch, and another one here that says pocket notch. So with the right sides together, we are going to match those up like that. Just line them up really nicely matching up the notches, which you may have interfaced over, <laughs> and pin those in place. The instructions say to pin and sew this seam at five eighths of an inch. Now, I always think it's a good idea to just double check that you've got your seam allowance about right when you gauge it, just to make sure that you've got five eighths of an inch, which is um, about 1.5 centimetres. So that's good. And repeat that on the other side. Next bit of the instruction says to press the seam towards the pocket and understitch, which means that we are going to stitch to the right hand side of the seam <clears throat> over three layers of fabric, the seam and the pocket. Now when we do that we actually stitch it from the right side down here so that we get a nice finish on this side. You can understitch this actually with a, um, a smaller stitch which is quite nice. Gives you a bit of a um, <clears throat> more detailed finish, a bit like a top stitch stitch. And you just want to sew that a few mil in from the seam. Now the pattern asks us to grade the seam, which is this seam here. And what that means is quite simply that we are just going to reduce the seam bulk. It's got a lot of interfacing on there, so it's really nice and strong and sturdy, but it's going to give us quite a bulk um, when we press it. So we take the inside seam, which is the one with the interfacing on it, and just trim that down by half. That way, when we iron the fabric down, there's less bulk. Let's iron that in place now. <clears throat> so the pocket is now sitting underneath the leg. This is the right side of the leg looking up at you. We're gonna flip it over so that the pocket facing is there. And then it says to fold so that the notches match. Now we've got one notch here, one here, and one here. 
So what we're going to try and do is just line them up so that this notch matches with this one. Just move that down so you can see it. And this one matches with that one on the leg right there. Okay guys, so you've got two notches, one on each side which is lining up. Now it says to iron that and then baste along the edges. I'm just going to baste along the edges of the pocket now. And when I baste, I'm just going to increase my sewing stitch size to 5mm and I'm just going to baste it, which means a quick stitch, about hmm, within one centimetre of the seam. Now you don't need to backward stitch um, when you start and end the seam because this stitch is um, insignificant really, it's just helping you mark, helping the fabric just stay in place and you'll be sewing the seams together properly later. Okay, so we've sewn up piece E with piece F and this is our side front leg. We're going to sew this onto the centre front leg, which is piece G, and we're going to sew it along the side seam, which is this seam down here. Okay, so with right sides together, let's do that now. And we're just matching the notches as we go here. There's another one on the leg here. That's really helpful just for gauging where things are at. There's another one here. Let's get that one in place. Okay, so let's give that a sew now. Don't forget the seam allowance is 1.5 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so we've sewn our seam down here and now the instructions say that we should um, trim it, trim the seam down to one centimetre or 10 mil and then finish the seam. And you can choose how you want to do that. So you have the option now of cutting it down um, like this all the way down and then doing a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. You can use your pinking shears to um, snip and, and cut it or you can use your overlocker which actually cuts the seam as it sews which is going to be what I'm going to do. So we've overlocked that seam now and then it says to press it towards the inseam. Now the inseam is the seam that goes down your leg, this is where your crotch is, so you want to be pressing the seam towards that side, okay? Just to make it sit nice and flat, you can see it's all bulky right now. So we're going to press it and then we're going to top stitch um, along the front leg seam just to secure it in place. Right, let's give that seam a really nice top stitch all the way down just to hold it in place. When we top stitch I'm going to do a 0.6 stitch and we're going to stitch within a few mil of the side seam. Okay, so with right sides together we're going to get those two legs that you've just sewn up, lay them on top of each other and matching the notches we are literally just going to sew around here. Make sure you uh, match the notches at this point here. Okay, so if you open up that seam, which you've just sewn, it's now asking us to press um, to one side the whole of that seam. Now it does recommend in the instructions that if you use a tailor's ham, which is this, you can um, just pop that underneath the seam and it just gives you a bit of a curve to be able to iron around it, um, which is really helpful. So if you haven't got one of these, you can always roll up um, some towels into a nice uh, tight roll um, and put those underneath just to give you a nice curve around the fabric. Okay, so that is the end of assembling the front part of the trousers. Okay, so we're now going to assemble the front facings, which are piece N and piece M. 
Okay. So this is the front panel of the trousers and then these are the two sides. Now let's just check that we're going to get this correct. <laughs> so this piece helpfully has a notch up here and you can see that's going to align exactly with that. So we've got a notch here and we should have a notch on this side. So that means that that will match up with that. Let's pin that in place. And let's do the same on the other side. So again, we've got a notch there and we've got a notch there. We're just going to line those two up. Notches are such a good way of being able to just double check that you've got things correct, you know, like in the right place. And I know a lot of people when they start sewing just ignore that bit because they're like, oh, I'll just line up. But it's really helpful when you're trying to understand how a pattern sits together to actually have that information to hand. And it gives you like a lot more confidence about how to sew it. So let's give that a good stitch now. Down both sides. Let's go. Now we're going to press the seams open. So if we open those out, then we have those. Turn it over. And it's important that we press it open like this. So I'm just going to go to the ironing board and do that now. Okay, so we have now pressed open our side seams um, to the front facing. And we have an option now of how we're going to finish the bottom edge, which is this. So this will be tucked away on the inside of the um, trousers. <clears throat> and you've got two options. You can either overlock it, you can zigzag stitch it, or it also says that you can use bias binding to bind around it, which is actually my preferred choice. I think it has a really nice, neat finish. So basically bias binding is... Um, something you can just buy in the shops or you can make yourself. I won't talk you through that today. <laughs> um, it's a piece of fabric which has already been folded um, like that and then once more again like that. And what that does is it just ensures that the raw seams are enclosed and then you end up sewing that along like that. So we tuck the fabric in and wrap it around and go as we go and then just sew it on. This gives like a really nice neat finish as I've said. but. Um, one really nice neat way to do it is actually to do it as I've just shown you. So with the wrong side facing up, let's just grab some pins, open up your bias binding and with the right side of the bias binding lay that over your bottom seam of your front facing waistband and just pin it in place. Now because it's got a bit of a curve here um, I am going to be using a few more pins just to sort of hold it in place. Make sure that your seams stay open as well at this point. And that just helps the seam just to sit a bit flatter when it's on your body. Now there are a lot of different ways I'm sure of doing this. And I'm just showing you one way which happens to work quite well for me. But uh, you may be different and you might have a different way that you like to attach the bias binding. And that is absolutely fine. Just do whatever you feel confident with. That's the beauty of sewing, isn't it? That there's lots of different ways of uh, getting the, the same end result. And sometimes it's quite interesting to watch how someone else does it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna baste along this seam just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna flip it over and sew it round properly. Let's just take those pins out and let's just Cut it down the seam here. Get rid of that excess. Okay, so now we've sewn it in place there. I'm just going to, going to fold it over now. You probably don't even need to pin this, to be perfectly honest. But it's always nice to have a neat finish, especially when you're going to be the one that's seeing it all the time. So we may as well just pin it in place now. So we're actually hiding that stitch that we just sewed that basting stitch, we're hiding it inside this seam. Now there's a really fun way of adding uh, details to your clothes is the bias binding. Um, and you can often get some really lovely like colorful or um, things with different mosaics on them and something that just kind of adds a bit of a personal, um, personal feel to this garment, which is always really lovely. Okay, so we're gonna sew this as close as we can to the seam, to the um, edge here.
With right sides together, we're then going to pin the top side of the facing, which we've just created, to the top of the waistline of the front of the legs, which are the legs that we just sewed with the pockets in them. So we're going to match notches and um, the seam lines as well, bearing in mind that this facing is going to fold down and um, be on the inside of the trousers. And let's sew it up. Right, we're going to go and press that seam now towards the facing and then understitch it again. So we're going to press this seam up that way towards the facing and then we're going to understitch it. Okay, so we've pressed the seam up and now I'm going to flip it over and sew it on this side, on the front facing side with an understitch as it's known. So this is just a lovely small stitch. I'm sewing it at 1.6 mil, and I'm just gonna sew it a few mil into the, um, to the right hand side. And this just holds the seam down in place nicely. That can be quite helpful when you're doing this, just to gently, very gently, just encourage that seam to sit flat as it goes through your sewing machine. Um, just so that you don't get any sort of bulk unexpected bulk there. So it's asking us now to grade the seam which we've sewn and as we know we always leave this is going to be sitting flat like that so we want to leave the um, seam which is um, going to be sitting flat against the the front of the fabric so this bit here we want to leave that to be the longest and we're just going to snip the inside seam the one again with the interfacing, as per when we did our pockets, if you remember that. And we're just gonna snip off that, so it just has a nice grade. Flip that over. And then press along this seam. Okay, so we've finished that. We've pressed it down, and now we're just going to baste along the edges just to hold that in place for when we sew it to the next side leg panel. Okay, so the next bit of the instructions, quite simply, just say that we want to sew down this seam to make sure that this um, facing stays really close and is tied into this one here. So there are a few different ways of doing this. You can just pin it, and obviously we want it to be um, looking really neat on this side. And it's actually telling us to stitch in the ditch, which means that we're going to stitch um, down this seam here, right in, in the kind of, um, the crevice of the seam, I guess, which is there and on this side too. So I'm just gonna pin it really carefully. Obviously I'm gonna want to sew it on this side. So really, I guess in order to get a good finish, I'm gonna pin it and then probably just hand stitch it so that it's going down both sides really nice and neatly. Now hand stitching doesn't actually take that long, but I think quite a lot of people are um, nervous about hand stitching. Um, but really there's nothing to it. I mean, it gives you such a neat finish. You really have a lot more control. I think that's what it is over your um, stitching. I'm just sewing straight down matching up, making sure the needle is popping out at the seam on both sides. It's quite therapeutic actually to hand stitch. So when we're stitching in the ditch, we're trying to stitch down this seam down here, right down here, down, oh, down this side, right in the middle. Can you see where this groove is right here? So we're gonna put the needle in, put the foot down, line it up beautifully. and put your sewing machine onto the slowest stitch speed that it has. This is really important because if you don't do that, um, it's really easy to go wrong and to accidentally get it in the wrong place. Just going nice and steady.
Okay, so we're moving on to the back leg and we're going to assemble the back legs and it says with, which is uh, piece H. Now then, it says with right sides together. Pin down the crotch and stitch it very similar to what we did with the front legs. Do you remember matching the notches? And then finishing the seam. Okay, so we've sewn the back legs together and around the crotch here and we've finished the seam and so now it's time to press it. Now as we did with the front seam, it's useful to use a tailor's ham just to get around the edge of the curve particularly and the instructions say that we should be ironing um, towards that side which is towards the right leg as you're wearing it. Okay, so the next pattern pieces that we're going to be working with is pattern piece O, which is the back waistband. So we're going to open it up and the first thing we've been asked to do is to sew, stay stitch, sew um, along either top or bottom of the, um, the waistband and then that helps it just to, helps the fabric just to be able to fold easily when you iron it and acts as a bit of a marker. So let's do that now. So remember your stay stitching stitches can be 5mm, so a bit wide, a bit longer than normal. And there we have it, we have pressed the seam of the waistband. Okay, so now it is asking us to press the waistband in half. You can probably see that there are some notches, there are three notches. Let's just get the pattern piece for you again and fold it this way. <laughs> there are three notches along the side and what it's asking you to do is to fold it along the centre notch so that these two match up and we're folding it with the wrong sides together. So I'm going to fold it, line that up on there and I can see that my notch there and my notch there are matching up beautifully. So let's pin that in place. It's a bit of a marker reference and we'll just do the same on the other side and then we're going to iron it in place. So that's ironed in place now, folded along the length and the next thing is to actually pin the back legs to that waistband with right sides together. So the right side of my back legs and the right side of my waistband. And again, you can see that the notches should be lining up. So let's get those pinned in and pin the edges in first, lining up the seams really neatly. And obviously you can just fold, fold it back to give you a bit more space if you need to. We have some notches here. Now, if your fabric isn't quite lining up, maybe it's a few mil out, don't worry too much about it. Just get the notches lined up and the edges lined up. Okay, and most fabric is a little bit forgiving. So as you kind of sew it, you can ease it through. This is sitting quite nicely though. I think it all, it all, all comes down to um, <laughs> how accurately you cut out your fabric. And obviously there's a lot of human error in that. So don't worry about that. And let's give that a nice stitch all the way down so they're sewn together. Now it says to grade the seam and then press the seam allowance up. Okay, so we're going to be pressing the seam up and folding this over. So the graded seam that I want to cut is the one that is the top of the trouser leg. <laughs> All right, let's press that seam up now. Oh, 
Okay guys, it's really important to note I've got my, my back trousers at the bottom and I'm putting my top, my front trousers over the top. Unfold the waistband and the back so that it's stretched out. Align the top of your trouser with the crease along the waistband that you've just sewn to the back. Get that pin in place and that's your marker for the rest. Now look out for notches, there should be notches on the front and the back that line up, so pin those in first. Let's get those lined up. Now once you've pinned the notches together, then you can start pinning in between the notches. What this does is it just ensures that you've got a really nice, consistent, um, even, um, that everything's just sort of sitting together really comfortably in between each of the notches. So you're not gonna end up with like loads of fabric down the hem or up at the top of the waist where you weren't expecting it and where you don't want it. <laughs> okay, so we have pinned all the way down the side leg, matching the notches, all the way down to the ankle. Okay, what we need to do now is exactly what the instructions say, which does sound a little bit odd at first reading. This is the front with our um, facing, nice smooth facing, and this is our back waistband. What it's asking us to do is actually fold the excess of the back waistband over and down over that seam, pin it in place, and then stitch it. Just trust me on this. <laughs> and do the same to the other side. Okay, and now we're just gonna stitch this section between those pins just to stitch the waistband all the way down. Now don't forget that if you have um, finished these side seams, you won't be stitching a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance, will you? You will actually be stitching um, probably less than that. And it's probably quite helpful to actually stitch it from um, the back because you can then see the seam allowance that you've already done and just stitch over that. Now the next bit of the instructions say to cut a piece of two inch wide elastic to the length indicated on your size on page three. So flip back in your booklet to page three. And down here at the bottom, it says elastic length. So depending on the size that you've cut out for your waist, so I've cut an eight and the length of the elastic is 30.9 centimeters Okay, so get your trousers out again. And on the left back leg, which is this side, this is the wrong side facing me, it says to get your elastic, center it on the waistband. It's perfect fit, look at that, very nice. And stitch in place along the side seam through all layers, okay. Now, don't worry about the other side over here. We will deal with that later. It's quite an interesting little process that actually, so we'll talk you through that in a little bit. So pin that there and then stitch along that seam. And again, just to get that precision, I'm actually gonna twist it over and sew it on the other side. So I can follow the exact seam where I've already sewn it a few times. <laughs> So now lay the elastic over the waistband, turn the back waistband right sides, wrong sides together now, and then it says to press the side seams to the back leg. Now it's quite nice to get a neat finish on the edges there so you can just give them a little tug. Okay and we're going to press this side and this side. Let's go do it.
Okay, so now we need to get um, a safety pin and just pin it to the edge of that elastic so it creates a nice easy grip for us later. And actually what we're going to do now is, without having stretched the elastic, we are going to just pin in place the waistband along this seam. And we're actually going to sew it with the elastic in, leaving a small amount at this end so that we can pull through the elastic in a little bit. Now, as I mentioned to you before, this bit can be a little bit tricky. I'm just going to twizzle it around so I can um, get the angle a little bit better. You want to make sure when you're pinning it down that you are, or that the waistband is actually extending over the line that you've sewn here. I don't know if you can see that at this angle. Now I'm actually going to match up the notches in the middle just so that I am reassured that I'm getting this right and evenly spaced as I kind of pin it in place. Now remember that you don't want to do what I've just done and pin it to the back as well so just be super duper careful. Now guys this is a bit fiddly but it is worth it. Okay so just take your time So again, I'm just using to hand stitch this in place because this is quite um, a detailed element of the trouser pattern and the waistband. I always find it pretty hard to stitch in the ditch and get it to match up with this bit, um, with the back waistband and to make sure that I get a catch both as I sew. So I do prefer to just do a quick hand stitch along the seam. Now these stitches are really big they are probably a centimetre, centimetre and a half long, just like a simple running stitch. Um, but it will just help you give a much neater finish. And you can also make sure that you are not stitching the um, elastic into your seam by just sort of nudging it along with your needle. Now the instructions say to stop sewing 10 centimetres from this edge, so that's at this point here. So as a marker I'm just going to stick a pin in there so that when I get to the other side I know to stop when I get to that point. So sewing on the front now, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch along this seam. And that's going to catch the waistband in on the back. So as I'm doing this, I'm choosing a 1.6 mil stitch, straight running stitch, and let's go. I don't know if you remember from last time we did this, I said it was a really good idea to go super duper slow, just to make sure that you're actually going to um, stitch in the right place and stitch with accuracy. This is the back. So obviously not quite as prominent, but still important. It's good to get it right, it's good to get it looking nice. If you have one of these little labels, let's see, can you see that? One of these. Now is a really good time to pop that into the seam allowance, exactly where you want it and then you will be stitching it into that seam. Perfect.
Okay, so we have stitched in the ditch along the um, back waistband, but we still have the elastic caught in here. You need to pull that through and gather it, and then you need to turn it just that bit inside out so that you can attach the elastic onto that seam and sew it together and then you'll be able to flip it all back again. So take the safety pin off, no longer need that and let's pin it in place. And now you can flip the waistband back over again. And now you can begin to see how that's going to sit, can't you? Okay, so what you need to do now is actually go and try it on before you sew this little bit back down again properly. So go away and try on your trousers and see how they fit. If they feel too loose, you need to shorten the elast elastic. So you need to redo this seam take a bit off and then sew it there to make it tighter. Okay. Okay, so I've just tried these on and they are um, too loose for me. So I'm actually going to unpick this with my trusty unpicker. That's probably a good reason why you should just baste in place. Um, and I'm going to trim it off and then I am going to take out the excess. Now, don't forget that when you are um, adjusting the elastic, it still needs to be able to slide over your hips. So don't shorten it um, so much that you can't do that, okay? That's really important. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the trousers on. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to take off that excess of the elastic, which I don't think I need, and I'm just going to baste with a wide stitch, a long stitch, um, a five mil stitch across here, and then I'm going to try it on again. Now the beauty of making your own clothes is that um, you can make things completely bespoke to your shape and size. And that's the nice bit about the, this elastic band is that you can completely create it exactly how you want it to be and how it fits your body the best. So once you've basted um, the elastic in place and you've tried it on and you're happy with the fit, you then want to um, just trim it down to size. So you've just got like a <clears throat> five mil seam allowance there. Um, and then stitch back over it again nice and firmly with a normal uh, 2.5 stitch just so it holds it nicely in place and don't forget to go backwards and forwards at the beginning and end uh, just to really hold that fabric in place especially because this is the bit that will have a lot of um, tension and use as you stretch it over and get it on your body okay so flip the waistband over Stretch it back out again. Now this bit is quite tricky guys, so take your time over it again. I think the waistband is probably the trickiest bit of these trousers actually. What we now need to do is um, finish off this bit here. So as you can see I'm just sort of trying to stretch the fabric along the waistband so that it's as smooth as possible and straight as possible up here so that when we sew it down it hasn't got as much tension. Okay, and then just pin it in place. Similar to what you did with the rest of the waistband earlier. Just making sure that the waistband is overlapping over that seam. And I'm just going to uh, sew this in place, hand stitching it. just so that when I sew it from the other side, it is easier to get a more accurate finish. It's up to you, you can just obviously pin it. Again, that's the best bit about sewing, do it however you want. <laughs> 
learn what works for you and what sorts of finishes you're happy with. Okay, so let's just stitch that in the ditch now. Now, obviously this is a bit harder this time to stitch in the ditch because you have got the elastic all kind of gathered. You've got to just find out exactly where you sewed it in the ditch last time. Don't forget to bring your uh, stitch down to a 1.6 or whatever you had previously for your top stitching. <clears throat> and don't forget to take it slow. Now, if you, as you're making this, have realised that there's some sections that maybe haven't caught while you stitched in the ditch, there are a number of different things you can do. You can either re sew it, <laughs> uh, unpick it and redo it, um, which is absolutely fine, or you can just hand stitch it in place, which is also absolutely fine. So <clears throat> I've just noticed there's a little corner here where it was a bit tricky um, at the beginning to get it quite right. So I'm just going to hand stitch over that. And guys, don't be afraid of hand stitching. I know some people can be a bit nervous about it, but it is a really useful technique. And sometimes it's actually easier than um, sewing with your sewing machine. You can see here that the elastic is sitting over the bottom of the trousers. So you just need to kind of ease that up to make sure the bottom of the elastic is actually at the right, the right point um, at the bottom of the waistband and you haven't got like an overlap. You just need to manually work that one through. Just encourage it to be in the right place. And it's really important to get the right width of, that, of the elastic because it fits so snug, doesn't it? Okay, so that's looking much better. We can see um, the bottom waistband seam now and the elastic isn't overlapping over it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So once you're happy with that and it's nice and e evenly uh, distributed, get your pins and stick them into the elastic and through right to the other side at a number of points. And that means that when you stretch it out, you can see that's still fitting comfortably. And now the instructions say, to secure the elastic in place, sew two evenly spaced lines of top stitching at 19 mil, so that's basically two centimeters apart along the length of the waistband. This is going to be important because you want a nice straight line. So let's have a good look at this. Two centimetres apart, approximately. Starting at the top of the waistband. <clears throat> That's 19 mil, isn't it? We're going to mark that off there. Now I'm using here a um, friction pen, which is a pen that when you iron it, the pen line disappears. So don't use a marker pen <laughs> or anything permanent, um, as this will obviously show this is the right side of the fabric. So I'm just marking on some kind of checkpoints so that when I'm sewing on my sewing machine, I've got some guidelines as to exactly where I should be lining it up. Obviously your machine will also have some markers, but sometimes it's helpful to have both, as I've found in the past. Now the pattern doesn't call for us to use a stretch stitch for this bit, which is interesting. I think you could probably do either. You could probably do a lightning stitch on your sewing machine um, if you wanted to, or you could, it just says top stitch. So if you only need to top stitch, you can just do a straight stitch. So as you sew this, what you need to do is to pull and sew at the same time. This is quite tricky. So I would recommend that you put your finger and thumb on one of your pins, just so you've got a nice secure point, and then stretch it out like that. Put it into the machine, line it up with here, and then sew. You're gonna to have to hold it really firmly as you sew, but you've got this. So let's do it. It's really hard work pulling it so much. <laughs> I'm just going to stop when I get to my needle, pull out my needle, 
and get my hands back in place again. Holding on to the next needle and let's give it a nice pull and off we go. And so we've sewn one line of stitching and now we're going to sew the second line. And there we have it, a beautiful waistband, perfectly gathered seam. You should be really proud of yourself for getting that far. Well done. <clears throat> we don't actually have much more to go in the pattern now. We've done all the tricky bits. So let's move on to sew the inseam. Okay, so turn your trousers inside out so that the right sides are facing. There we go. And what we need to do now is line up the inside leg seam. So that is these ones here, okay? So line up there and then stitch and line back down there. Let's pin that in place, as it said, matching the crotch seams and the notches. So if we open it up at the crotch up here, you've obviously got the crotch seam that you've sewn before. So we're just going to pin that in place. Now, do you remember what I said before about just lining up the seams? That's really important here too. Although, to be fair, who's really going to see this seam? <laughs> but, you know, good practice, right? <laughs> okay, now we're looking for the next notch, which is this knee notch down here. I'm going to pin that one in place. Any more notches? Yep, we've got two down here at the bottom. Right at the bottom of the leg. That's great. So we've got all the notches done on that side. And let's just repeat that process on this other side. Okay, so we've got our key notches and our crotch seam all pinned. And now we're just going to um, add a few more pins just for stability. So that as it's running through the sewing machine, it holds it in place. I think this is the exciting part in the project, isn't it? When you've kind of like done the majority of it and you can see it's coming into place, you've fitted it around your waist, you are ready to go. We're now just gonna sew all the way along that seam, nice big long seam, and then we are going to finish it. The instructions do say that you can baste the seam first, just hold it in place. Um, feel free to do that. Okay, so we have now finished the inseam, inside seam of the legs, and we've uh, sewn it and we have finished it. It's looking pretty good and pretty neat. So now what you need to do, and this is a absolutely essential step, is that you actually need to try these on. So turn it the right way around, and off you go. Get in front of your mirror, and the most essential thing here is to check how it's fitting across your hips um, and down the length of your leg as well. If you need to make any minor adjustments, um, this is the time when you can just sew this hip seam in a little bit if you need to, um, or, or the legs, if they're a bit too baggy along the length of them, you might want to just trim that down a bit. Now, personally, I found that these fit absolutely beautifully. I've not made any adjustments to um, the hip. I've not taken anything out and I've not made any adjustments, which is really remarkable, actually. Quite often when you sew, there's like little tweaks and, and changes that, um, that you just want to end up doing, uh, just because you know how your body works. <laughs> um, and I have found, so the only thing that I did, and I think I mentioned this at the beginning, was that I graded the pattern size between the waist and the hips. So um, I think I graded from an eight to a 10, and that's the only change that I've done on this pattern, which is a really simple and necessary step. Um, just because that's what my body measurements uh, sort of fitted into. Now go away and try this on. And the thing you want to be looking for is actually at the bottom. Um, you want to decide if you're happy with the length when it's on. Now don't forget that you will also be hemming. So we're going to be hemming the raw seam up um, and over. So you might want to even just sort of pin it in place before you try it and check that you're happy with the length. So off you go and I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so it is time to do the hem and to sort this out. Now, on our pattern pieces, we did actually have two little notches on the bottom of the legs. And now because I've overlocked them, <laughs> I can't actually see where they are. So if this happens to you, a really good idea is actually just to get the original pattern pieces um, and just overlay them to check for um, where those notches should be and mark them on manually. Okay, so I've got one of my pattern pieces here. It doesn't matter which leg that you pick. Uh, it doesn't matter at all. They would all have the notches matching. And I'm just going to use my um, my pen that uh, erases when I iron it and disappears when I iron it, just to mark on where those notches are. Now this is actually really important because this is where you're going to be folding your fabric. <clears throat> I'm just going to do it on both sides, the front and the back of the leg. And now then, it says to press the raw seam allowance under half an inch or 13 mil, and then fold under two inches or five mil and press again. Okay, so we're gonna just fold it over that amount and just pin it in place. I'm just pinning it a few times because um, I know I'm going to iron this in a minute and then roll it under again, but I just want to make sure that I'm folding it reasonably accurately so that my trouser hems are going to look good. Now don't forget the side seams are pressed towards the back leg. I'm actually got the back leg facing up here, so that's what I'm doing here. Don't forget your tailor's ham is going to be really useful going underneath that leg to help you just go round all the curves and iron it that way. Okay, so we've ironed it. It's now all in place and the hem is looking really good. It's time to do the top stitching of this hem as our final step. So it's time to sew the hem of our trousers. So with the wrong side of the fabric facing up, put that onto your machine and just check where the needle is going to be sitting. You want the needle and the top stitching um, line to sit just below the um, turned under seam, where I'm pointing here. And you want that just to follow that line really nice and neatly so you haven't got like a bit of a, a baggy bit on the bottom of your hem. So just make a note of where the bottom of your trouser is sitting on the sewing machine, on the edge as a gauge. And then take your trouser leg out of the machine, turn it the right side round. So here we are, we've turned the trousers the right side up. We're now going to sew the hem uh, using a top stitching uh, stitch of 1.6 mil. And we're just gonna line up the bottom of the hem of the trousers with that reference point that we noted earlier. And off we go. Well done everyone, this is the final step of making a pair of Pietra trousers. Okay, and there we have it, a nice beautiful top stitch to the our bottom of our trousers. And as you can see, we've only got a tiny little bit of um, rollover at the top and it's capturing all of that seam, so it's hiding all the raw edge underneath, which is absolutely perfect and I'm really happy with that. So we've finished our trousers and I am so keen to get them on and show you all. So I'm going to do that now. Are you ready for it? <laughs> I love how these sit on the waist. I like how the elastic at the back just gives you so much room for manoeuvre. Um, and they just look really elegant as you sort of walk around. So comfortable as well. And the shape is just really nice, that crop length. And they're really easy to move around in. So yeah. There we go, guys. I also thought you'd like to see some close-ups, so here we go. Let's just take a little look at the close-up. Um, hand in pocket, classic uh, posing manoeuvre. <laughs> Love the detail of the elastic at the back. Such a nice, really smart detail. 
The trousers just fit so comfortably on the natural waist. Really nice pair of high-waisted trousers. So that's view B, and this is view C. Surprise, surprise, I've done a pair of shorts as well. <laughs> I actually had enough fabric um, in the supplies that I had to make a pair of shorts. So this is view C, I'm absolutely in love with them. I'm gonna be wearing them all summer. I cannot wait for some lovely sunshine. <laughs> and details of the close-up, again, so similar. Um, in style, they're just a bit wide around the hips, uh, the shorts, because they're, I think they're taken from view A. They're very similar to that. So if you're looking for a comfy pair of trousers for the summer, or shorts, this is your pattern. So well done on creating your Pietra pants. That's incredible, it's amazing, well done. And thank you so much for joining me as well on this uh, video. I've really enjoyed doing this so along uh, with you and I hope that you found it helpful and informative too. If you've got any questions, just post them in the link below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and the other thing is that we would absolutely love to see your version of the Pietra pants. So if you've made them and you've got some lovely photos you want to share, please do sign up to uh, create a free account on our Minerva website and there you can post pictures of your pattern and you can tag the pattern and then other people can see it as well and um, we'd love to see what you've made so please do post that it's a lovely little online community <laughs> um, the other thing is uh, if you've not already signed up to our Minerva Crafts Club do sign up for that it gives you 10% off um, the whole of the website um, for the first year that you sign up the first 12 months so and there's also loads of other various offers that you can enjoy as part of the Minerva the craft club member so check out that the link will be below as well um, yeah and if you've got any questions or comments just post them below um, thank you so much for watching I really hope you've enjoyed the um, the whole process and I cannot wait to see what you make next so. Bye.